Recently, I made a video review of the Keith Titanium GI Canteen and Mug Set. And in that video, I said that Keith had actually sent me two complete sets, the GI Canteen and Mug Set and the 40 ounce cylindrical bottle along with the 650 milliliter mug. And they do nest together. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this combination, keep watching. All right, just before we get started, there's a couple of things I want to mention. First, let's get this out of the way. I have some environmental challenges happening here. Black flies all around me. Just like in the last video I did on the Keith Titanium Cantina mug set, I've got black flies all over me. Now, I do have repellent on, and it is working, but it doesn't stop them from getting in my eyes, my nose, and places like that. The other thing is kind of breezy. Now, right at this moment, the breeze died down, so I'm taking an opportunity to get this segment recorded. Uh, those are two things. I will work with it. You will hear me. Hopefully, you'll be able to hear me over the wind, and we'll get started. Now, the other thing is, of course, is I just want to let uh, say thank you to Keith for sending me these items so that I could share them with you. Like I said last time, these things are expensive. There's nothing inexpensive about a titanium ca uh, canteen and mug. The question is, is it worth the money that are being asked for them? And that's the question we'll try and answer in this video. All right, so what I thought I would do is I'd move down to the bench top that I'm sitting on. I'll show you the this canteen and mug set. I'll go over its specifications. I have some tips and tricks, like in the last video, for how you can use this, especially suspending it over a fire. And as in the last video, I have another canteen set that I'm going to share with you. Much less expensive, right up front, much heavier, but much less expensive that you can look at to help you decide whether or not you want to go the extra expense for the, for the titanium. All right, let's get started. All right, quickly, I'll go over the specifications for the Keith Titanium water bottle and mug as a set. Of course, these can be purchased separately if you so desire. And then I'll show you my tips and tricks for use with them. And then we'll compare them with another set, something that I have owned for some time. So let's start with the water bottle. The water bottle is a volume of 40.6 ounces or 1200 milliliters. So a good size bottle. It weighs 8.4 ounces or 237 grams. The mug is a 22 ounce or 650 milliliter mug and I did measure and that is right up to the very top. So functionally uh, five, two cups or two cups of water, 500 mils, probably not much more than that you're going to put in here. But the weight for that with its lid is 3.5 ounces or 98 grams. That means that the set together, if that's the way you want to carry them, comes in at a relatively scant 11.8 ounces or 335 grams. So lightweight for sure. Quickly, let me show you what else came with this, and then we'll start talking about each of the items individually. So this is the carry pouch for the water bottle. And uh, simple, again, very simple. I mentioned in the previous video for the GI Canteen that the complaint that I had heard was that the quality of the carry case was not up to that of the bottle itself. And I differed on that in saying that the quality of materials and construction was very, very good. It was just so simple, so lightweight. And my thought was it met the design criteria for the set. It wasn't intended to be a complete all-in-one cook set with everything you could possibly carry, including the kitchen sink. It's a water bottle. I carried this around my neck like I do with the military canteen, so I want it to be as light as possible. In fact, this one, unfortunately, won't allow me to carry the cup with it, and I'll share with you why in a minute. Maybe one of my few gripes on this. Uh, it's a nice effective case. It has very, very thin foam padding inside of the double layers of nylon. It is sewn and constructed well. It has a drawstring at the top, which I am not sure why, because uh, yeah, as you'll see in a second, there's no need for a drawstring to hold this bottle, maybe if you wanted to use a different bottle. The attachment points for the straps are made of titanium and they will come off quite easily, so if you want to remove it, you can. Um, okay, so let's just insert the bottle and I'll give you my comments on the sheaf and then we'll put it aside. So right up front, here is my first con for the sheaf. 
there is no drain hole or a little eyelet or anything in the bottom of this, not sheath, carry case, I call it the sheath. There is no drain hole in the bottom of that. Um, yeah, okay, so you don't expect to accumulate a lot of water, but here is the reason why I'd like to see one. This is such a snug fit going in that it actually is slow to put in because of the tight nature of it. It would be nice if there was a point right here for allow the air to come out. All right, not a deal breaker by any means, but uh, it would have been just a nice little extra thought, make it easier. This actually is more of an issue trying to get the bottle out of the case. It actually starts to clap this. That's how snug it is. Now, the other thing is I do try to keep this relatively clean and free of creosote and tar is that um, if you allow that to build up on the outside of the bottle, you're going to make it really hard getting it in and out because it'll be sticky. As I mentioned in the other video, when mine gets a kind of dirty and dark and black, I just take it to the stream edge and grind it into the gravel to get as much off as reasonable. And then I dry it off and I feel good about it. So there's nothing sticky on it right now. All right, so let's put the case aside. Let's talk about the bottle. 40.6 ounces, that's a good size bottle. 1.2 liters, you know, there's, that is a good size water bottle. Uh, the top on it is a little bit different. It, first off, it doesn't screw on like a regular water bottle. It's what they call a bayonet mount. And let me see if I can give you some close-ups on it. So right at the top, you'll see there are a rim and a gap as it moves around. And that gap will match up with the case, or not the case, the lid, where there are little bent over areas here. I'll talk about the silicone seal in a minute because that's actually a kind of unique feature. So the way you put this on is you put it on so that it slides there, you turn it, and it locks into place. However, if you continue to turn it, you can pass right past that lock and just keep going around. So what's the big deal there? Um, well, I've had this happen where I have put this on, took it past the locking point and then the bottle leaks. So you just have to make sure that when you turn that on with that bayonet, bayonet mount, you only go to a clicks and then stop. Don't go any further or it'll start to come off. All right, I mentioned the silicone on the inside. So this is how you're sealing the canteen against leaking is with this silicone. What you may not be able to see in this, actually you might be able to see it, Hopefully it'll focus in right in the center of the cap is a very, very small hole. And the purpose of that hole is to regulate pressure inside of the canteen. So if it gets very cold and everything starts to uh, condense and shrink, for lack of a better term, that doesn't hold the cap on so tight that you can't get it off. Same thing as if you were to put hot water in this as it cooled down and it uh, started to reduce in size, the amount of water, it can actually create a bit of a vacuum and hold a cap on, making it difficult to get off. This actually allows air, very, very little air, to move in just to equalize the pressure. So whether the items are very hot or very cold, you're going to have an equalization in pressure. But that hole is so small, so, so very small, that no water is coming out of there. It's just vapor, if anything. More likely, just a little bit of air is coming out. All right, so there's the canteen. It is a wide mouth canteen, making it easy to fill up at streamside, making it easy to uh, put a water filter in to fill up, making it very easy should it get dirty inside to, for it to be cleaned. So overall, I really like this canteen, especially like the volume of it. All right, let's have a look at the mug and then we'll talk about them in combination. So here is the mug that was sent to me by Keith. It was interesting when they offered to send me the canteen set and they said, you know, why don't we send you both? You can do a comparison video, which is my plan is that I'll be making a third video where I compare the GI canteen with this one, uh, this set. And just to see some people like the traditional look of the cylindrical one as opposed to the kidney shape of the military GI one. So let's uh, just talk about this for a second. The volume on this, as I mentioned, is 650 milliliters or 20 22 ounces, a very lightweight, butterfly handles on the side, very well construction. You get that same sense of quality you do from all Keith products. The lid fits on just nicely. It's just a little bit of looseness, so you don't even think that it's going to stay on if you turn it upside down, because it won't. It has a small triangular ring on top. 
that is there for it, lifting it off, of course. Now, here is the one little gripe here. Do you know, there are a lot of the Chinese-made titanium mugs and lids and uh, the like have the same type of a ring. You know, it's small. I'd prefer to see something bigger of a D-ring. You can stick a stick through there, the point of a knife, or use your fork to lift it off. If it's uh, not too hot, you can grab it with your fingers. But here's the thing. Most of them have modified the attachment point to allow it to stand up. They have a little cutout right at the, along the, uh, where it goes over the top of that triangular piece so that you can slide it sideways and have it stand up. This one more often than not falls down on me. So, ah, you know, small thing, right? Not a deal breaker, but it would have been nice just now. It's standing up right now, but usually when I, yeah, it's not gonna fall down on me, of course, because I'm recording, but most of the time that just falls over and I have to use the tip of a knife or something to pick it up. Again, not a deal breaker, just something to be aware of. Now, as far as the combination fit of the two together, there is a little bit of slack inside, but not too much. In fact, you don't really feel like you're wasting any space. I, I wondered if I could get a, a bandana around the outside of the bottle and slide it down inside just to keep the cup clean. Uh, no, no, you, I can't anyway. The bandana just is, it makes it a little bit too tight. So it is, you know, just snug enough that way. Uh, one regret though, or one other con, I think I already mentioned this, is that you cannot put them in combination inside of the carry case that came with the canteen. But that's okay. I have a couple of other carrier cases for my more traditional sets, and that's what I will share with you in a moment. But before we do, let's talk about using this over a fire. So it is obviously not set up with a bale or anything for use over a fire, but there is a few tricks very similar to what I did with the GI canteen that would allow you to suspend or hang this. So here is one trick, and that is a carabiner. Snaps perfectly in place would allow me to hang this down over a fire and suspend it, albeit at a bit of an angle, but if you don't overfill the canteen, that's not an issue. It also allows me to use it as a pot grabber if I wanna pick it up off of a fire when I've just shoved it in or off of a wood stove, or wood stove I can pick it up and pour it with this as a uh, expedient pot grabber. It works very well. Uh, a couple of items here, I have to reach for one of these things. How about a pot grabber? Well, I carry a pot grabber with my other canteen set, so and I use it on these canteens as well. Again, just an inexpensive Coglins aluminum pot grabber. Works perfectly for grabbing onto the canteen, lifting it out of the fire, and pouring my water into a mug or bowl or whatever else I'm gonna be doing, like I will be doing today for lunch. Now, uh, I tried this. This is the um, what do you call them? Fish mouth spreader that you can get from Self-Reliance Outfitters and other places. Stainless steel fish mouth spreader that has been adopted into use on a lot of the Pathfinder pots and pans and mugs and the like. And uh, usually it holds on well. You just squeeze it together, insert it into the bottle, and then you can hang it over the fire. It will work on this bottle, but to be honest, it doesn't take too much to pull it out. I don't think it's the weight of the bottle or the water that would cause it to come out. But if you, you know, gave it a nudge one way or another, it, uh, it might come out on you. So I don't have the greatest confidence in the fish mouth spreader with this wide bottle. I think in the bottle, uh, Mouth is maybe just a little bit too wide and the shape of the shoulders, just a little bit of an angle, mean that they don't get the purchase it does on other water bottles. But again, that's okay, not a deal breaker. Make your own, <laughs> you know? Um, this is made from a single skewer that comes in a package of eight from the dollar store. They are quite resistant to being bent out of shape. Takes actually a bit of work to make one, but this, it doesn't look like a fish mouth spreader, but it is designed to work with this water bottle and it will hang it just perfectly and I have no fear that this one is going to come out of the water bottle at all with any amount of water. So that's a second way of, of uh, hanging the bottle over water. I just have a piece of bank line to help hold it together a little bit in my backpack. And the third or the fourth method, I guess I'll show you, again, very similar to what I did with the uh, Keith Titanium GI set was a toggle. So again, a toggle that is just offset, meaning a little bit longer on one side of the knot than it is on the other, allows it to go down inside and hang 
perfectly so you can suspend it over the water and when you want it to take it loose you just pull it to the side and lift it out. Uh, you still have to contend with holding onto a hot water bottle once you get it out but if you have gloves or a bandana that's not an issue either. So those are my tips or tricks for suspending this over an open fire. Of course you can set this right on top of most wood stoves or push it right into the coals of a fire if you want to do it that way and it will work just fine. All right, let me set up for a second and I'll show you the alternative to this set, this kit. All right, I also just took the opportunity to adjust the camera a little bit so that uh, I can get it more in frame. Um, so the case that I'm showing you is an inexpensive case that came out of China. It is identical to what is made by Condor. It's not up to the quality of a Maxpedition, but I think I paid like six or seven dollars Canadian for this. And I bought one in black and one in Coyote. Uh, in fact, the Coyote version of this one that I own is what I do carry the Keith titanium uh, cylindrical bottle and uh, mug in when uh, I'm not bringing it out for video display purposes. So, you know, they, they're effective, they work. But the, what's more important is the contents of this. Oh, by the way, they thought of it, didn't they? They actually put the little hole in the bottom. So I guess there's no reason why Keith couldn't have done the same. All right, let's show you what's inside of here. All right, so to begin, I have my mug and it is sitting upside down on my water bottle. This is the GSI 750 milliliter mug. So it's identical in size to the one from Pathfinder. It did not come with holes drilled in the sides and it did not come with a lid. So easy enough, I purchased Actually, I purchased a couple of the lids from the Self-Reliance Outfitters so that I could use them in conjunction with the GSI mug without purchasing a whole new mug set. By the way, shipping for anything coming out of Self-Reliance Outfitters into Canada as well as duty can be quite expensive. So that's part of the reason why I wanted to go with what I could purchase very inexpensively. Now I have something that I can use that same fish mouth spreader with to hang over the fire. So that's one advantage this setup has already over the one from Keith is that I can hang the mug. Again, 750 milliliters. It's only 100 milliliters more than the Keith, but it's another three ounces of water as well. Another way of looking at it. So you just get a little bit more volume in this mug. Problem with this one is, of course, is the weight. It comes in at 6.5 ounces or 185 grams. So literally twice the weight of the titanium one from Keith. So let's put that aside. Now, the water bottle here, I know what you're gonna say, and you're right, it's brand new. No, this has not been put in a fire yet. This is the Nalgene Wide Mouth Bottle, but it is the newest one that I have that I carry this setup with. Uh, prior to this, I was using a clean canteen, which is very black and very dirty, but uh, I decided to move over to this one just because, well, this was gifted to me, so why wouldn't I? It occurs to me I removed the uh, retaining band on this. It must be somewhere at home. But I brought this out just for demonstration purpose. It still has the sticker on it. So a little bit embarrassing. No, this has not been used or put in a fire at all yet. But I wanted to do, again, to do this as comparison. So the Nalgene Wide Mouth Stainless Steel Canteen comes in at 38 or is a 38 ounce volume or 1124 milliliters. So just slightly smaller than the Keith. But the weight, the weight is 14 ounces for the water bottle alone, or 396 grams. Again, twice the weight of the titanium water bottle, and that's significant. Now, I will tell you, if you ever get a chance to compare an Algene against a clean canteen, you'll discover that these are heavier than the clean canteen, but also they're thicker in metal, so they're a much sturdier canteen between the two. I don't know if you need to have one this heavy, this sturdy, but it's nice to know that if you're looking for one that you'll never have to worry about damaging, this would be the one to have as far as stainless steel goes. I have no fear of damaging that titanium one either. Again, one of the pros of titanium is it's so, so super tough. Okay, so those are the two items that I have with the weights. So the total weight of the package that I have, not including the case, is one pound, four 
8.5 ounces or 581 grams. Again, twice the weight of the Keith Titanium setup, but it has a few advantages. As I mentioned, this one has a lid and with using the fish mouth spreader, I can uh, hang it over a fire. Either one of those, for that matter, can be hung over a fire using the fish mouth spreader and just gives a little bit more versatility. I also carry the Coglins uh, puck grabber in the front pouch of this. I don't carry much else with this. You could add more things to it, but again, it just seems to me that why would I, I guess. All right, so those are the two sets compared side by side. Let's see if I can get them into the pitcher at the same time. The titanium one on my right, your left, and the stainless steel one. Man, can you ever feel the difference? That is so heavy by comparison. I think the mug itself with the stainless steel one is heavier than all of these put together. Okay, that's all I wanted to do in terms of a comparison. This is not the only alternative that's out there. I could have used a plastic or uh, Lexan uh, Nalgene bottle to go with this mug and it would have been lighter again, but I wouldn't have had the versatility of something that I could boil water in. Thought I'd quickly show you using my water bottle to boil water for my lunch. So. Yeah, another beautiful spring day here in Nova Scotia and another day of fire ban. So I am using alcohol. My combination today is the Firebox Freestyle. Oh, that's one way of using the lid is to, to help keep things warm. Using the uh, Firebox Freestyle with the Lixada Typhon stove inside. So I'll pick this up with the Coglins. Dehydrated meal. I'm just adding the water. I pre-measured the water out so I know how much is in here. I'm going to give that a stir, put the lid on and let it set for a period of time. But I think in the meantime, I should be trying to get that put out to conserve the alcohol. I'm going to knock this off. Put that in. Good. All right. The stove is out. I'm mixing up my lunch. I'll enjoy this, maybe a cup of coffee, and then we'll close the video out. All right, a few closing thoughts on the Keith Titanium water bottle and mug set. So uh, as with the first video regarding the GI Canteen and mug set, one of the questions that we're trying to answer here is, is this worth the money? What do you get for all that extra money when you purchase a titanium set? Well, there are some definite pros, but there are some cons to go with that. Pro number one, weight. Half the weight of a stainless steel setup. Now, yes, you could combine it with a plastic water bottle and come up with almost exactly the same weight, but you would give up some of the versatility of having a bottle not only very much sturdier than a plastic one, but something that you can boil your water in. So you get a little bit more versatility that way. Uh, the other thing is, is that this material is very, very, very tough. As I mentioned before, uh, the titanium is every bit as tough as stainless steel. Some people will say that it is even stronger. Certainly for the weight of it, it is a very strong one. I have no fears that I'll ever damage this set in any way. Not to say that I couldn't if I really tried, but then again, I could with the stainless steel as well. Here's the other thing about it is Titanium is non-reactive. It will not rust so it, and will not corrode. It will not get old and cracked. It will not take on flavors, depending on what it is that you are putting inside it, other than water, of course. So it has that going for it. The quality of the construction is just top notch. Now, there are other Chinese made titanium sets. I can't speak to them in terms of comparison of quality, but Keith is without question known to be the leader in terms of the quality of construction. Now, not all is perfect. As I mentioned, there are a few cons for the two of these things. Very small, certainly not deal breakers, just something that you have to be aware of before you spend your money. I think for me, that little, the lack of a stand-up triangular ring on top of the lid for the mug is probably the most annoying, the only annoying thing really for the mug set. It, otherwise it works just perfectly. And again, not a deal breaker. Otherwise love the mug for sure. For the canteen, I just have to remember not to over tighten the top so that it goes past its locking point, which is actually fairly easy to do, and then have water leak out of the top of it. Those are the only gripes I have. So 
Are they enough that they would deter you from purchasing them? Again, like the last video, I apologize. I can't answer this question for you. All I can do is answer it for myself. Would I have purchased this if it had not been sent to me by Keith? No, I would not. And the reason I would not is that I cannot, for me, justify the added expense of the titanium over a stainless steel set even at twice the weight. Now that Nalgene is much heavier than it probably needs to be. As I mentioned, my clean canteen uh, water bottles are much lighter than the Nalgene and much thinner and were more likely to dent. But they served me with, you know, even, I think one of them has a couple of dents in it from being dropped full of water on hard rock, took a dent, hasn't affected it, hasn't hurt it in any way. So if you're looking to put together a reasonably placed, reasonably weighted set, you can still do so using stainless steel. So I don't know that this is something I would have purchased. Having said that, I like it. I like it a lot. I'm glad I have it. I carry this now more often than I do the stainless steel. But again, that's not the question. It's the, not a question of, is it better? It's a question of, is it worth the money? Again, that's something you have to answer for yourself. Is the savings in weight that valuable to you that you'll pay this price? Uh, I have not talked about the cost of these items because costs vary everywhere, but what I will do is put the cost of these items in the video description as I have them right now, as well as all the physical descriptions and the weights and everything for these, so that you can have a look at them, and I'll put the links to where these can be purchased, as well as at least the other ones, including the Pathfinder set. Okay, that's two videos about Keith Titanium water bottles and mugs. The last one is when I bring this one back and compare it directly against the GI set. That won't take very long because that's another question that you may need to answer, want to answer for yourself. Maybe you're used to carrying something like this and you're wondering if there are advantages to the kidney-shaped GI set or maybe you've always had the GI set and you're wondering if should you consider this. That's what the next video will address. But until that occurs, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.